One of our protagonists whose work I look forward to seeing the most is easily Rob, aka the Doc Monster. His characters' voices are always next level. They are diverse and fun, they consistently match the look of the character they are voicing, and they add oh so much extra magic to each plot he publishes. I had the opportunity to, virtually, sit down with Rob to get the scoop on how he does what he does. Hopefully his insights and tips will inspire you to consider using a version of your own voice in your next plot. Welcome, Rob. Thanks for having me, Helena and for that amazing introduction. I'm excited to be here, and just like you, I hope this interview inspires my fellow protagonists to give voice recording a shot. Can you share a bit about your journey with storytelling via Plotagon and using some truly cool real-life voices? I've been a storyteller for as long as I can remember. I've written scripts, short stories, comics that I've also drawn, have made personal short films, and have dabbled in animation. Much of that requires a great deal of production time, but when I discovered Plotagon, the floodgates opened. It became a tool where I could get my ideas out of my head much faster. Plotagon's deep character creation tools and wide array of emotions are instrumental in helping me achieve my goals. When I tell a story, I think of every aspect as being important to its overall impact. Among a very long list... I consider camera angles, facial expressions, and, <laughs> and thank you for the compliment, cool, real-life voices. For me, it's not only important to affect a voice that matches the character's design, but to use that voice to deliver emotion, intent, and timing. Many protagonists face self-doubt when using their own voices versus TTS ones. How did you overcome any initial challenges or doubts in your own voice acting journey? <laughs> I'm still not 100% sure I've overcome them. There were two things that used to hold me back from producing my stories. One was what other people would think. The other was crippling perfectionism. Now, I haven't worried about what other people think for a long time because I realized the way I tell stories is my journey. Staying true to that path is what's important to grow as a storyteller. In a world where everyone has an opinion and certain people are only interested in making others feel bad, I take advice and criticism only from those I know and trust. I have a small and very close circle of friends and family who are genuinely interested in seeing me grow as a creative person, which means they're honest about what they like and don't like. Now, I'm free to take or ignore their advice, but at the end of the day, I know they only have my best interests at heart. Having that support system has helped me grow, has boosted my confidence, and has kept negative comments from making even the smallest impact on my mood. Now, when it comes to perfectionism, that's something I've been learning to deal with for only the last few years. I am my own worst critic. I think a lot of creative people can say that. I would keep things to myself because I decided they weren't perfect enough to share. Well, I'm here to tell you, as a human being, it is impossible to attain perfection. Once I accepted I would think nothing was good enough, but would put myself out there anyway, it was freeing. Do I love everything I've produced? No. Am I satisfied with how all my different voices have turned out in my projects? No. Am I proud that I finished a project and shared it with others? Absolutely. I keep learning with every project that it's not about the perfection of the result, but what I've learned along the way making that project. What I learn about the process, techniques, and myself are far more valuable than wishing for some perfection I know I could never achieve. Can you share some tips on building confidence in this, especially for those just starting out? Find your people. Whether that's a combination of family, friends, or people in the field whose opinion you value, create a support group. A group that is there for you as you are for them. No one succeeds by themselves. Now, I don't mean to gather a group of people who will always agree with you. There's no value in that. There's no way to grow in that environment. I mean, find people who will challenge you 
question your process, who understand what constructive criticism is. If you find the right people, they will help you grow, and as you grow, your confidence will follow. How do you determine what specific traits or elements to include in a character's voice, and how does that help distinguish characters from each other if you're doing multiple character voices in a plot? When working on anything, I've found it best to work from big to small. Start with big strokes and work down to the finer details. When casting a story, I first figure out what archetypes it needs. For example, in my hashtag Plotivator challenge submission, this is a job for, I needed a superhero and a voice of reason. I kept the superhero larger than life because that portrayal, along with the Plotagon emotions I used, delivered the idea quickly. As for the voice of reason, I needed someone who had experience. In my mind, and for a visual shorthand, that equated to someone older. Someone older meant I needed a voice with a little gravel in it. For a gravelly voice, I immediately thought of my Sadie from Secaucus character. That's my process for the main characters. For incidental characters, like the coffee shop customer or the friend at the end of the Dark Athenaeum ghosted, I try to think of which movie actors or broad character types I would cast in those roles and do my best to approximate their voices. The coffee shop customer was an affectation of Mindy Kaling, while the friend at the end was a version of a surfer dude. Are there certain voices or voice types that you find particularly enjoyable to portray? Whew, <laughs> where to begin? <laughs> I love the filliness of the Edwin type voice. The superheroic tone of the man of adventure. A bit of Peter Lorre for those times I need something a little creepy. The high pitch for kids or mice. Of course, there's also Edward Creep from the Dark Athenaeum. When it comes to affecting celebrity voices and various accents, I consider what I do as approximations, not impersonations. Edward Creep is an approximation of Bill Hader's impersonation of Vincent Price. When you pointed out it sounded like Vincent Price, I thought, hey, I must be doing something right. <laughs> How do you work on developing versatility in your different voices? So much is involved for a human being to emit sound. There's breath, the diaphragm, the chest, the throat, the tongue the mouth, and the mask, which encompasses the nose and the front of the face. It sounds like a lot, but by controlling those various parts, we can work at producing the tones we'd like to emulate. I think of the voice I want to affect, and then determine where in those areas is best to place it. If I'm looking for something nasal, maybe a professor type like in Mr. Peabody and Sherman, I put it through the mask. If I'm looking for something Deeper, like a villainous character in the neighborhood of Darth Vader. I try to make it originate from the chest to the base of the throat. If I'm portraying a meek character who's unsure of himself like Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors, I usually go for a higher pitch than my normal voice and constrict my throat on certain words to get that uncertainty across. Do you have any exercises or practices that you recommend for those aspiring to use their voices in Plotagon to enhance their vocal range? Whether or not one is a singer, singing exercises are great for any kind of vocal work. I used to do regional theater. I don't consider myself a singer, but often found myself in singing roles. Our music director would warm up our voices by running scales. You know, the whole la 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 la. I go up as high as I can without feeling the slightest bit of strain. Once I've reached my limit before feeling strain, I work my way back down the scale. Every once in a while, voice work may require one to strain a bit, usually when screaming, but it's always best to keep that to a bare minimum to prevent damaging one's vocal cords. There is also taking care of your throat. When it's cold outside, use a scarf or thick high-necked garments like turtlenecks to keep your throat warm. Stay hydrated. It's not only a great practice for everyday living, 
but it's always good to keep one's throat hydrated by drinking water. I also drink honey lemon tea to help coat my throat and kill any bacteria that might try to take hold there. Making mistakes is inevitable in any creative process. How do you approach and learn from mistakes in your voice acting performances? I'm a fan of Bob Ross the painter. You know, happy little trees. I 100% agree with him when he said, we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. When I'm recording, I keep every second of audio I record because there have been many times where a take I didn't like in the moment turns out to be the one I use. When I'm recording with my wife, there are times the banter we have after flubbing a line becomes a joke in a script later on or an improvement on the lines we're working on. One time, I cracked in the vocal tone I was using only to discover a new tone I hadn't even thought of. Honestly, not every single slip-up is useful, but in keeping an open mind to myriad possibilities, I never sweat the happy little accidents. Can you recommend any resources, such as courses, books, workshops, online platforms, etc., for aspiring voice actors to improve their skills or that you found particularly helpful in your own content creative process? I grew up watching cartoons. A lot of cartoons. I still do. I've spent a lifetime trying to emulate amazing voice actors like Mel Blanc, June Ferre, and Frank Welker, but just to name a few from so many voice artists I respect. I'm aging myself here, but I grew up watching impersonators like Rich Little and Fred Travelina trying to do what they did. You could say I learned by the monkey see, monkey do method. These days, YouTube is an incredible resource for practically anything one wants to learn. Joe Zija on the Joe Zija channel quickly goes through his process of creating certain character voices in Learn How to Create Character Voices with Me. Jacob's Vocal Academy is a channel dedicated to vocal workouts for singers, but voice actors can benefit just as much from it. Five simple voice acting tips from a pro from the Improve Your Voice channel starts with the basics presenting a great foundation for anyone looking to voice act. Articulation exercises, an excellent article written by Andrew Hurl, I hope I pronounced that correctly, containing those exercises can be found on stagemilk.com. There is a world of information out there that a simple web search can get you where you need to go. Technology can surely play a significant role in what one can do with their voice. What equipment and software do you consider essential for someone just starting out using their own voice in their plots? When I was first dabbling in flash animation many years ago, I used a simple mic. I think I got it in a cheap sound recording set. To make recordings and engineer the sound, I used the Audacity app, which is free. Now, the mic quality wasn't the best, but it did the job and was good enough while I was learning. For those who are just starting out and may not have a mic, I suggest getting a cardioid microphone. It picks up the sound of what it's pointing at, and practically nothing else. I record voices in my home office. Sometimes, I can hear my neighbor's kids playing basketball outside through my closed window. Having my cardioid mic pointed away from the window ensures it won't pick up any of that sound. I've seen them run as cheap as 10 US dollars, but in my experience with microphones, you get what you pay for. Besides the mic, I suggest having a pop filter to cut down on the bursts of air that may distort your sound when they hit the mic. They're called plosives, commonly heard with words that contain B's and P's. I've seen pop filters go for about nine US dollars, or one can make their own. How to make a DIY pop filter on the Vimeo YouTube channel and how to make a DIY pop filter in two minutes on the Tech Brawl YouTube channel are fine resources to make your own. When I was ready to pursue voice recording more seriously, I got a small sound mixer and a Shure SM58 cardioid microphone. The mixer isn't necessary to get good recordings, but I'm a bit obsessive about my sound, where I like to control the quality of it before it even hits my computer. I use both a foam filter and a pop filter on my mic. I use a mic stand because I found controlling my breathing is much easier while standing than sitting. I've used this setup with the same equipment for over 20 years, and I'm still happy with it. 
Since I've had a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud for the past few years, I've learned to use Adobe Audition to capture and edit my vocal performances. It's got some amazing bells and whistles, but I think Audacity still does a fine job. What message or advice would you like to share with protagonists who are considering using their voices in future plots, but may be hesitant or uncertain? My advice is, if it's something you really want to do, sometimes you just have to rip the bandage off and do it. Unfortunately, the internet being what it is, you may encounter those who will try to tear you down. I've had friends who've gotten accolades from so many people, but let one negative review drag them down and affect their work. This is the beauty of having a support group like I mentioned earlier. If you've gathered a group whose opinions and advice you value, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. And if a negative review does affect your mood, you've got people to talk to who could help put things in perspective and improve your frame of mind. Finally, and I know this is such a common piece of advice, it's become a cliche, have fun. Voice recording offers an opportunity to be as silly or as serious as you want to be. Take full advantage of that. Can you share a moment in your creative endeavors where you realize the impact your voice had and how did that inspire you? I've been lucky in that there have been a few moments like that throughout my life, but the most recent was when I had the opportunity to participate in the inaugural Plotagon Film Festival in 2023. Compared to other members of our Plotagon community, I'm fairly new, and with all the editing and effects work I put into my productions, I'm one of the least prolific. As my short played, there were so many people in the comments who reacted positively and enjoyed my vocal performances that I still derive inspiration from that day to produce more. It was a fantastic experience. Wow, Rob. Thank you so much for your insightful, educational, and thorough deep dive into voice acting with Plotagon. I hope your knowledge provides our community with valuable information and encouragement to try using real-life voices if they're not currently doing so. Now I'm going to go find a pop filter so I can cut down on those plosive P's and B's. <laughs>